Hey everyone, welcome to the Tech Rally channel and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different and I'm going to create a coding tutorial video. I know it's been a really long time since I did that and if you've been following my channel from the beginning, you'll probably already know that I started off with writing coding tutorials and this is something that I am itching to share with y'all. It's not something that I'm going to be doing all the time, but if I find something that is useful and can be helpful for you in your coding journey, then I'm definitely going to do it. So please let me know in the comments below if you find something like this useful and I'll try to sprinkle them in more within my channel. Other than that, I'm going to be creating a React application that leverages the Pokemon API and material UI library as well to create a custom hook function that will make initial fetches independently regardless of where you use it in the component. And I'm going to call this a use fetch hook. There's nothing special about this function name or anything like that, especially if you're familiar with React and the built-in functions using use state and use effect. It's more or less just abstracting things away. So what I'm going to be doing first is just doing it the original way and then showing you how you can do it using the use fetch custom hook. All right, without further ado, let's just get this started. So the first thing I'm going to do here is show you the Pokemon API. So going on pokeapi.com, you'll see that you could reference this URL called pokeapi.co slash API slash v2 slash Pokemon slash ditto. But you could also search for a list here. And what I'm going to do is just search for the original nine Pokemon that you kind of start off with. And that will be Ivysaur, Bulbasaur, Venusaur, Charizard, and then Squirtle. So it's like the fire um, plant <laughs> and uh, water elements. So let's see. Okay, so now that we know this URL, this is the word we're, we're going to be essentially making a fetch to this API and then render out the information. And we're going to be basically using the built-in uh, fetch API to get that information. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be importing the use effect and the use state from React. And then we're going to create three separate variables here. So here I'm going to say const, uh, maybe I'll just say Pokemons and then set Pokemons equals use state to an empty array. We're going to say const is loading, set is loading to true. And const is error, set is error, use state to false. So the first variable, Pokemons, is going to be the list of Pokemons we're going to store after making the fetch. The is loading is just a way to decide, hey, is the fetch still loading? If so, then maybe we'll just render like a loading screen. And if is error actually produces some type of error, that means that something kind of went wrong. And how we're going to do this is now we're going to use the use effect function to make our fetch. Cool. And here I'm just going to create a function called fetch Pokemons. And then we'll make this an async await function. And here let's do a try and a catch block. So we're going to catch for any errors that might possibly happen here. And what we're going to do here is call a const res equals fetch. And then we're going to get that URL. And I think we could just do this. Actually, no, I could just copy this one. Sweet. Boom. And then we also need to add a wait in front of it here. Cool. And then we're going to get the JSON response. So he go here, await res.json. And then let's see what outputs here. I'm actually not too familiar with the fetch API as much because I like to use Axios, but for the sake of this exercise, I thought it would just be easier to just use the built-in function. But in the case that there is an error, then we're gonna say uh, set is error to E. And then we'll call fetch Pokemons here after. Let's see if that actually works. <laughs> cool. So we get the results. Awesome. Now we just need to set the response 
appropriately here. So let's just say set response. Actually, nope, it's set Pokemons to json.results. And we'll also do set is loading to false. Awesome. And then here we also need to say set is loading to false as well. Now let's try to see what the UI outputs. So I'm going to just say console.log. I'm just going to list out the list of Pokemons is loading and is error. Awesome. So we see the list of Pokemons here. And then is loading is now false. And I get a reference error that says set response is not defined. Hmm. Let's see what's going on here. Also, it looks like there's some weird misspelling here. Let's see what's going on. Oh, this must be an old error because I actually don't have that anymore. So I think we're good. Reference error set respawn. Let's uh, clear this out and then just refresh it again. I'm pretty sure it's not going to show up. Cool. Yep, exactly. There's some like weird UI sometimes with Code Sandbox and we'll just uh, forget about that for now. And then just to test it out, let's just do if is loading. We'll just return a div that says uh, loading Pokemon. And then if is error, then we'll return a div that says, hey, Pokemon fetching error occurred. So now if I mess this up and just write V5, we'll see that the error is popping up and then changing it back to V2. And then sometimes we just need to refresh it. Now it works clearly. So there is that little moment of flicker where it's going to say is loading is true. So we'll say fetching Pokemon and then it's going to show you the list of Pokemon. Right now we have no real output here because we haven't done anything with the data of Pokemons. And the first thing I'm going to do before I kind of render out the UI is install the material UI uh, library for React. And I could just search material UI core and just click that one. Cool. Now I have the uh, library installed. And what I'm going to be doing is actually just looking at the documentation here. So if we scroll down into the card component, maybe we'll just render something else similar to this. Maybe we won't have the actual, um, these buttons here. So it looks like there's a bit of like card components and whatnot here. And what I'm going to do is more or less just, let's just copy this whole thing. Uh, maybe I'll just do here. Yeah. And I'm going to paste it up here. And I'm going to more or less just copy this component here. Awesome. And what I'm going to do here is instead of having this stuff, I'm going to just call this Pokemons. And now I'm just going to do a, a UL. Uh, no, not a UL. Let's just do this and say Pokemons.map. Pokemon. And then let's just return a this thing. So right now classes is not defined because if you look at the code here above, we have some issues and we could just literally just copy this too as well. And this is just very specific to uh, material UI. You don't have to do this. It's called use styles. And then lastly, what we need to do with the use styles. Ah, we just need to call classes, use styles. Cool. So obviously right now, we're not going to see what we're going to be looking for because it's just showing you lizard, lizard, lizard. But if you count the number of times the lizard card is popping up, it's nine times because there's nine Pokemon that you're fetching. So once we have that, let's do I actually don't need this topography stuff because I really don't care about it. Here I'm going to do Pokemon.name. 
So now it's War Turtle, Charizard. Uh huh. And I actually don't even care about these card actions either. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Nice. Um, so as a result, we don't need this button. We actually don't even need this either. Cool. So I went ahead and just downloaded some image assets from the web of all the first nine Pokemon. And if you are looking for those links, I'm just going to provide you with the code sandbox of the full project that you can just use if you're kind of like following along. And here I've just kind of cheated a little and just assume that each one of these is referencing to Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Venusaur and whatnot. So here I'm just going to say um, the image is kind of where the actual image of the static file or whatever asset that you're looking for is. And in our case, since I've already hard coded it in, what I can do here is to say Pokemon list. And here I'm just going to add an index. So when I look at the Pokemon list of the index, it's just going to reference to each one of these Pokemon, which boom, it shows up. Obviously not the most ideal way to look at these Pokemon because some of them, the sizing is a little funky, but I'll leave that up to you to figure out like, Hey, like how do I make sure that the image is more contained? And that's just, that's just CSS. So I highly recommend you to figure out, Hey, like how do I get this picture to look out a little bit better? Cause honestly, that's not the point of this tutorial. The point of this tutorial is for you to create a custom hook, which we haven't actually done at all. So now here comes the, the heart of the exercise or what we're trying to do. So now that we've got this information, we have, you have to admit, like, this is a lot of code. Um, it goes down to like 81 lines just to render out a list of Pokemon and a good chunk of the kind of logic that's happening here is within this use effect function. So now what I'm going to do is, Hey, let's just move this functionality over to a separate function that anytime I want to do the same exact thing of fetching for information on initial load, I could just call this very convenient special function. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a file called use hook.js. And more or less, I'm just going to copy everything over from the app.js use effect function to here. So I'm going to do import use effect and use state from react and I'm going to call function use. I call it use hook. <laughs> I meant to call it, uh, use fetch.js <laughs> apologize. And then I'm going to call it function function use fetch and it will take in a URL. And what I'm going to do with this specific argument is, well, what I mean by that is that we want this function to be reusable in many different scenarios. So we can't just hard code in like a URL, like we did last time with the limit nine, we want this function to be reusable in many different areas, many different URLs. So it's going to take a URL parameter. And here we're going to say, we're not gonna say anything. We're just going to take this, copy it over here. And we're also going to take this, copy it over here. And lastly, we're just going to return Pokemon's is loading and is error. And then let's just export default this. And since we are taking the URL parameter, like I said before, now we could just remove this and just type in URL, save it. Cool. Now we abstracted all of that information from app.js into this use fetch hook. And now what we can do, actually, another thing that I will suggest you to do is now change the naming of this fetch Pokemon because this use fetch hook doesn't even care about what it's fetching. You could be fetching Star Wars characters. You could be fetching Pokemon characters. You could be fetching a list of blog posts, who knows? So let's just make this as generic as possible. So here we could just call it like fetch, um, data. And we'll even be very, like, very, very clear that we don't want to use Pokemon's here. So we could just say, um, data set data. And I guess we're going to have to just assume that there's always going to be a return of JSON dot results. So there is a little bit of finagling you're going to have to do. I do admit, but 
you get my drift, right? We're trying to make this as abstract as possible and more reusable as possible is what I meant to say. So data, 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 sweet. Now that we got that out of the way, we could do import use fetch from use fetch. We'll get this use fetch function. We could delete more or less all of this here. Ah. Actually, no, I didn't delete it too much. I apologize. Cool. And then here I'm just going to say const Pokemons is loading is error equals use fetch of the URL here. And then I'm going to delete these three because no longer need it anymore. Boom. And I'm going to clear this out. Just restart this just to make sure no errors. So we are getting one error and it says that each child in a list of Pokemon should have a unique key and that's totally easy to do. So I'm just going to write key equals Pokemon dot name. And then let's clear that out. Reset again. Sweet. Look how easy this was now. Everything that we used to have in this uh, app component that basically had all of the information regarding the use effect, the use state, and getting all of that information, we could now abstract that away into a use fetch hook. It's super clean, it's super reusable. I could use this use fetch hook in any part of my component that I start to build out. I like this a lot and I hope you like this a lot because it is a lot cleaner. So that's it. That's all it is. And if you like content like this, please hit that like and subscribe. You know, I really appreciate everyone watching my channel and watching my information. If you do like these type of coding tutorials, like I said, please let me know in the comments below. I want to do more of these. A part of me does, but at the same time, I also love sharing tips and tricks and knowledge of how to really break into tech. I think, I think there are a lot of other great channels that provide that kind of value, uh, but at the same time, you know, there's not, it does, there's nothing wrong with also sharing my knowledge as well. I'm realizing. So yeah, let me know in the comments below again, and I'll make sure to include them. If that is what you all want to see either way, aspiring developers, I hope uh, this was helpful for you tech rally out and I'll see you in the next video.